A convention that we challenged was the location that we used. In the trailers, we researched various locations we used in different time periods and confined spaces were also used. Confined space is a typical form of convention for our genre as it shows entrapment for characters. This can be combined with various locations, like the trailer for Donnie Darko. Our main influence for the use of locations is the official teaser trailer for the 2013 Carrie. The trailer is established and shot from a high angle that is panned further into the town, in which tension is built as the shot gets nearer to the protagonist. The shot shows the town in a good state to a bad one, and finally to the cause of the problem. Accompanied with the voiceovers, this is effective as various voices are used to set in the aftermath of what the trailer shows, giving the audience an idea of who the character is. The trailer was a huge influence because this drew out the idea of focusing on one character and showing a limited amount of footage to give the full effect and meaning of a teaser trailer. Even though Carrie contained a voiceover, we decided against this idea as we wanted the music to make a full effect on the audience of feeling eerie and surreal. A typical convention we challenged was low orchestra music. Instead of having a conventional soundtrack, we decided to use the song Tiptoe to the Tulips by Tiny Tim, which was used in the horror film Insidious. This childlike song could be manipulated to sound sensitive and eerie. We made the soundtrack our own by adding sound effects. One sound effect was used continuously to sound hollow and give an ambient atmosphere. Two other sound effects were used when the clown was shown. This non diegetic sound is crucial within our trailer as the revelation of the clown was seen to be tense. The sound effects allows the audience to grasp the character as the antagonist. Research into other trailers showed us the type of music we could use and the different effects that they would have for the audience. American Psycho's music is orchestral, however, also challenged at its low but fast paced final triumphant. In Carrie's trailer, the antagonist is humming peacefully as the camera is focused on the outside of the house, but as the shot goes to the inside of the house, the humming is mixed in with the sound of beating and screaming, which is haunting and eerie. Therefore, our aim for our music was to make audience feel uncomfortable, as if the, what the audience see is not really what they hear, as the footage makes the sound feel twisted and distorted. The first scene of the trailer consisted of various shots we were unable to include in our trailer, as they were unsuccessful. This was due to being shaky, low in lighting or resolution. Fortunately, the shots were going to be shown rapidly, so the footage was convenient. In order to make the face of pace effective, I had to slice shots that they were only seen for a flash. These shots varied in duration in order to emphasise on the antagonist, which allows the audience to grasp a better sense of who the character is. Films that had used this effect on the trailers are The Great Gatsby, The Black Swan and Shutter Island. In all three trailers, shots picked up pace, which built up tension. However, our trailer did not do this as the scene varied in pace, emphasising on specific parts. For example, a shot of the clown smiling into the camera was longer than the shot of the clown sitting on the pews. The Black Swan's far scene consisted of a longer period of shots, then shortened as it picked up pace along with the voiceover. At the end of this, the protagonist lingers on the screen. We incorporated this in our own trailer by zooming into the shot of the clown standing behind a frosted window, which gave a sinister atmosphere as the music is concentrated more and becomes more childlike. Shadow Island also helped with this particular part of our trailer, as tension is built up at its peak before the trailer picks up pace. We use this by showing the clown in its full form for the first time, then reinforce the tension and suspense. This allowed the audience to feel scared and creeped out. We use close-ups in order to allow audiences to feel the same discomfort and sinister feeling as our protagonist, which makes the clown seem scarier. We combine this with the fast-paced editing so that the audience feels as if everything is going too fast, which creates tension. We also edited our trailer so that it started off slow and steady, but then picks up pace as suspense and tension is built up. A convention of psychological thrillers is the running theme of reality versus illusion. This is shown within our trailer from the start as the dragging of the protagonist is done by two antagonists within the plot, the priest and the clown. This created a sense of confusion for the audience as it shows the priest dragging her to the clown and back again. This makes the audience question what is real and what isn't. The fast scene also helps to demonstrate this as the pace also offers confusion and suspense as the audience are unable to gather what is going on. Religion is another big theme for Amy. The church is used to show the Catholic traits of our protagonist, along with the priest, as well as the character's name and the tagline. After researching traditional Christian names, Amy was one of the first to appear. Deeming it appropriate enough for our film, we tried to find font that was best fitting. The font chosen showed a candle in the letter I, which helps to show the traditional idea that candles represent the light of God, and the red symbolises the blood of Christ and the sacrifice he made for Christians. This links in with our theme of religion, as our tagline in our poster is, God can't save you from him. A typical convention of the psychological thriller is that the antagonist is male and the protagonist is female. We develop these stereotypical characters by following another convention of the antagonist having a connection with the protagonist. 
We developed the clown's costume of having a conventional red wig with a white painted face. However, we also challenged it to make the character appear more scary and adult-like. This was done by the clown's costume having a red, black and white theme, in which he did not have the perception of being big, bouncy or fun like Pennywise the clown in the film It. Pennywise is first seen holding balloons and appears friendly, whereas our first glimpse of the clown is automatically seen as a dark, mysterious character. The protagonist is seen as vulnerable as many psychological thriller characters are. Amy's costume is seen as respectable as she has come from head to toe to connect the idea of the religious theme. The running mascara helps to emphasise the uncomfortable and distorted atmosphere that the character feels and helps the audience empathise with her. Films such as The House at the End of the Street, The Call and Back Swan have trailers which show the protagonist emotionally trapped by screams and hesitant movement. Amy is seen as quiet but trapped too. Even through the little screen time, we see that she looks lost and scared. Unlike many other trailers, we did not show the triumphs of the protagonist. Black Swan and Carrie show the protagonist in a vulnerable state, and as attention is built, we then see the character in a state where they overcome the problems and are seen as a totally new character. We decided against doing this in order to keep her character and the plot in mystery. Instead, we decided to focus on our teaser trailer on our antagonist. Even though Disney's Planes is not a trailer we would look at for our chosen genre of film, it had a big influence in the making of our trailer. Disney had made individual teaser trailers for each character in the movie, which is what we aim to do in order to tease the audience without giving too much away.